Hi, I'm the Tabletop Teacher, and in this video we're going to unbox a whole brick of DC Wonder Woman 80th Anniversary Hero Clicks that the great folks at WizKids sent for us to preview. The release date for this set is April 21st, and a pre-release is set for April 7th, which means you could get your hands on a couple of boosters in early April. Perhaps even play a match at your favorite local game shop if health measures allow it in your area. Anyway, in the meantime, let's see what we could pull in that event. There is a legacy card on each brick of Wonder Woman 80th Anniversary Hero Clicks, and if you've seen Scott Porter's excellent unboxing series, link below, you already know that these cards update some Wonder Woman figures of the past. Very cool. In the first booster, we pull an allied soldier, Edda Candy, Donna Troy, a rare Silver Swan, and a super rare Mary Shazam. Wow, that's an amazing first booster. Silver Swan is very vulnerable to Outwit. Her being targeted by Outwit prevents her from using any of her powers, and she won't be able to make range attacks either until that use of Outwit expires. This is going to be tough to work around in regular matches where you can expect your opponent to probably have one character with Outwit, in the very least. In sealed matches, though, I think she'll do just fine. Her special attack power is more powerful than it might look at first glance. Giant Reach 2 is always nice, sure, with Blades, Claws, Fangs even better. It's the free action here that steals the show. You could use it to make a free Blades, Claws, Fangs attack before making a non-free attack. Or you could make a non-free attack, then use Telekinesis or another character to carry her, and then use this free action to make another Blades, Claws, Fangs attack. These different options and others are possible because of the condition that needs to be met in order to use this free action. Silver Swan has not attacked, or Silver Swan has been placed. I don't remember seeing this wording before. I've come to expect has not been placed, like we often see for Colossal Retaliators, but not has been placed. Seems strategically promising. And we also had Mary Shazam in this booster. She has strong combat values, starts with a full speed charge, a free use of Quake after a successful close attack, traded defend, and a 50-50 chance of playing bodyguard for a friendly character within range and line of fire. Mystic's team ability and leadership, she's a strong 75 point character that needs to steer clear of opposing characters that can deal penetrating damage or can use outwit though. Wonderful sculpt. In the second booster, we find Huntress, Batman, the uncommon version of Wonder Woman, Maxi Zeus, and a rare Strife, the goddess of discord. If you play her at 25 points, you'll get a two-click character that grants the Mystic's team ability to friendly characters within four squares, no line of fire required. But if you play her at 50 points, she'll have a stop click after those first two clicks and becomes a giant with better combat values. And don't forget, characters with great size now have that new version of willpower that succeeds on a 3, 4, 5, or 6, removing an action token like a personal version of leadership. Nice. In the third booster, we get a German soldier, an Amazon of Banna Migdal, Artemis, Medusa, and a rare Circe. Oh, she may start the game with a Wonder Woman equipment equipped. Let's hope we'll get something that fits well with her power set. She has the Mystics team ability, as well as the Wonder Woman ally team ability, which is new in this set. It's a Super Senses variant that only works on a 6, and grants a plus 1 to this character's Super Senses role, should they already have it. Cersei has a very versatile dial. 6 range, starts with charge and blades claws fangs, probability control and invulnerability, plus the Wonder Woman equipment she starts with. On top of all that, her second trait, a more brutal approach, will either heal her of two clicks, count them, two, no dice roll, or allow her to make an attack when she knocks out an opposing character. She'll be useful in all sorts of situations. I like. In the fourth booster, we pull an Amazon Warrior, Diana Prince, Jason, the Prime version of Donna Troy, and a rare Miss Martian. Okay, Donna Troy is amazing. She's a seriously good close combatant. Let's start with her special defense power. She has toughness and super senses, but since she has the Wonder Woman ally team ability, that means she succeeds her super senses on a four, five, or six. But she can also start the game with a Wonder Woman equipment equipped. If that happens to be Wonder Woman's bracelets, her super senses gets an additional one. So with the bracelets, she would only fail super senses on a one or a two. 
She also has the Titan's team ability. She destroys blocking terrain as she moves through it. Two targets, charge and quake, six clicks. But for dessert, her second trait, the groovy 70s, makes it so that on each turn, the first friendly finalized attack roll of seven is a critical hit. That's a lot of chances of landing a critical hit. And it's not just for her. On each turn, the first friendly attack roll of seven is a critical hit. All of that for 50 points? She's going to be a lot of fun to play. As for Miss Martian, she starts the game as a strategically strong piece with telekinesis and leadership, and a mind control variant special power that allows her to move five squares or less and use mind control. Note that she can move through blocking terrain and characters, so you can set up nice surprise attacks if your opponent is not careful. After those first two clicks, she turns into a good range attacker with a running shot penetrating psychic blast combo with probability control. On the last click, which is a stop click, she gets up close and personal with a charge close combat expert combo, which means that she'll have an attack value of 12 with 5 damage. Now if you can manage to make that devastating attack and have another character heal her at least one click after that, could be Donna Troy with her Titan's team ability, she'll have a stop click to fall back on again. Very good 70 point investment in my opinion. In the fifth booster we find an Amazon of Bana Migdal, a DMA agent, Superman, the uncommon version of Mary Shazam and Dr. Poison. She's going to be interesting to play with sidekicks, which she can generate with her launch the attack leadership variant. She has traded poison, obviously, and a free action in that same trait that allows her to choose a sidekick like those German soldiers she can generate, and that sidekick can now use poison this turn. And she's not going to be easy to get rid of with that mastermind on every click. She's part of my next past or soldier team for sure. In booster number six, we get a Gorilla Knight, the Cheetah, Harley Quinn, Ferdinand, and a super rare Ares. Oh, this sculpt is amazing, and I think I'm going to like this character a lot. He is sideline active, so should you choose to add him to your sideline instead of on your force, that doesn't cost any points by the way, friendly captains and sidekicks will get a plus one to their attack when attacking one or more characters with the soldier keyword. But if you play him on your force, he is a very good close combatant that starts with charge, two targets, Blades Claws Fangs with a 12 attack, 4 damage and impervious with 19 defense. I'm a little surprised he doesn't have the Cosmic Energy team ability though, um, I mean he is a deity. He'd make a terrific herald for Galactus mind you. Don't know what I'm talking about? Watch this video to find out more. Boy. Ares has a leadership variant that succeeds on a 4, 5 or 6, which he can use to generate two soldiers instead of the usual leadership effect. One of those soldiers will be an allied soldier and the other one will be a German soldier. Only one of those is friendly to your force. Now why would you do that? Well, the more of these soldiers are knocked out, the closer you get to achieving Ares's mission. Every knocked out allied or German soldier will give Ares an endless war token. At the beginning of your turn, Ares gains one mission point for every two endless war tokens he has. These endless war tokens pile up, they're not discarded when you count them. So if say at the beginning of your turn, six of these soldiers have been knocked out so far in the game, Ares will gain three mission points. When he hits 20 mission points, you win the game. The seventh booster gives us Wonder Woman, a DMA agent, Maxi Zeus, Nemesis, a rare Wonder Woman, and a super rare equipment, the Lasso of Truth. This is the first time I see this in a booster. A rare figure with a super rare equipment? Interesting. This is a shifting focus Wonder Woman. She can switch with the common version of Wonder Woman we got in the same booster. Know that when you use shifting focus with Wonder Woman, if she had a Wonder Woman equipment equipped, that equipment is removed from the game. It's not scored, but still, you have to make sure it's worth it. Her Princess of Themyscira trait allows her to start the game with any Wonder Woman equipment equipped. She starts with a 12 attack, running shot, incapacitate, and special damage power that reduces the defense value of opposing characters within range by minus one for each token they have. Line of fire is not required, and this modifier is not restricted to attacks by Wonder Woman. All your friendly characters will get this. Very, very nice. The Lasso of Truth grants incapacitate with the range of four as free. 
and if the character using it has the Wonder Woman ally team ability, the opposing characters that are adjacent to the original targets also become targets. The rare Wonder Woman we were just looking at has two bolts. This free action could slow down quite a few opposing characters. If the character using the Lasso of Truth is named Wonder Woman, they'll have a free action to remove this equipment from the game and equip another Wonder Woman equipment from outside the game instead. This gives a lot of versatility to Wonder Woman. In booster number 8, we pull the Cheetah, Superman, Nubia, Donna Troy, and another Dr. Poison. She shares the Soldier keyword with Ares, that's promising. Note that the Soldier bystanders don't have the Sidekick keyword though. In the ninth booster, we find an allied Soldier, Batman, Diana Prince, Jason, and a rare Star Sapphire. If you choose to play her on your sideline, friendly captains and sidekicks modify attack plus one when attacking one or more characters with the Green Lantern Core keyword. At 60 points, she'll start with a running shot penetrating psychic blast combo along with energy shield deflection and a leadership variant that, when it succeeds, gives friendly characters a plus one boost to their defense until your next turn. Now, that's not instead, it's on top of leadership's usual effect. If you're looking for a 25 point character that can use telekinesis or barrier, she could be just what you need. And in the last booster, we get, oh, Earth Shattering Pool! It's been a while, hasn't it? A chase figure, and in the last booster, too. Anyway, in this booster, we pulled a DMA agent, Gorilla Knight, a third uncommon Maxi Zeus, a rare Hippolyta, and Chase Sinestro, along with his stop sign construct. Hippolyta gives sidekicks a big advantage. Steel energy, but with closer range attacks. This could be very useful for Amazon Warriors and Amazons of Bana Migdal from this set, which she can actually generate with the leadership variant she has on every click. She generates them on click number one, that's four clicks of life on either of them, and they can use steel energy. 60 points, 6 clicks, decent combat values, she has 2 targets with no range, meaning she can target 2 adjacent opposing characters with a close attack. She has the Wonder Woman ally, team ability, and GSA. That's a very interesting piece. And finally, Sinestro, who is one of my favorite characters in the DC Universe. His twisted worldview would make for a very interesting supervillain movie, in my opinion. Anyway, this Indigo Sinestro has a free action that allows him to generate an Indigo Construct. I wonder if more modern age constructs are on the horizon. This one, the stop sign, has a trait that makes it so opposing characters within two squares can't use improved movement. The stop sign can use barrier, of course. It has a 10 attack for two damage, but it's slow. It's more likely to be used for barrier than for attacks. Still, it's an option. The Construct is knocked out if it's not within 6 squares of Sinestro, but he can generate a new one unless he already did this turn. Constructs are very different than bystanders. They don't block line of fire, opposing characters don't need to stop their movement once adjacent, and don't need to break away from them either. They can't be chosen for Mastermind and their combat values can't be modified. A Construct is more like a projection of the character that generates it. Now, back to Sinestro, he has 6 clicks and very decent combat values for a 50 point character. Where he absolutely shines, in my opinion, is in his special damage power. Close combat expert is very nice, of course, but his free action is more powerful than it might look at first glance. Your choice, heal or knock back. You can either heal an adjacent character, one click, no dice roll required or anything, just heal one click. It's not regeneration nor support, so you could bring back a friendly character from a stop click. And it's not limited to friendly characters either. Okay, there are very few cases in which you would want to heal an opposing character one click, but if that previous click is one where the character has lousy combat values and is earthbound neutralized for instance, that could be perfect. Or you could choose to knock back a character one square, again, friendly or opposing character, in the direction of your choice. This could be that missing square a friendly character needs to reach an opposing character with an attack, or just help in breaking away without rolling for it. The character needs to be within range and line of fire, but Sinestro starts with 10 speed with sidestep and has phasing teleport on the second half of his dial. Getting into position shouldn't be a problem for him. Great sculpt and an amazing piece. 
very glad I pulled this one. And our legacy card is Wonder Woman number 93 from the Unleashed series, released in 2004. Really wish I had this character now. She used to be 198 points back then, but costs 175 now with this legacy card. She now has the Wonder Woman ally team ability and may start the game with a Wonder Woman equipment equipped. 10 clicks is really good and that 13 attack on the first click is stellar. But back in 2004, combat values would tend to be much lower than today. On her last click, while her speed is low, it's really her attack and defense values that are dismal for today's standards. Her Defender of the Innocent trait will help her with her defense, at least. She starts the game with three Fortified tokens, and will get plenty more when she rolls for either of her team abilities. A free action allows her to spend those Fortified tokens to modify her defense value and bring it up to 17, still leaving her pretty vulnerable on that last click, but it is click number 10 after all. So this was a very nice brick, wasn't it? Looking at the common figures, we're three trades away from completing the common set, the doubles we have are mostly of generic figures, soldiers and agents, which is always cool. There are more uncommon figures than commons in this set, and we're missing five to complete the set. We pulled half the rares, plus an extra Dr. Poison will be able to trade for one of the missing rares. And we got two super rares, plus one super rare Wonder Woman equipment and a chase with its matching construct. With 12 chase figures in the set, I wonder if we can expect more cases with two chase figures than usual. I guess we'll find out on April 7th when a pre-release event will allow players to get their hands on a couple of boosters before the full release on April 21st. I really, really like this set. Can't wait. What are you hoping to pull? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy this content, please support the channel on Patreon. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thanks for unboxing with me.